There are many tools and frameworks available to help you succeed in business. However, choosing the wrong tool or using the right tool but in the wrong way has a massive negative impact on efficiency, productivity and engagement. So this series, we will introduce some common models and we're going to show you how to apply them properly so that they have value and don't become a stressful waste of time. In today's video, we are looking at a model called the SWOT analysis. Ahoy, Bryce here from Brighter Training and welcome to our skills maintenance series, which is designed to do two things. Firstly, introduce common tasks and models done in business. Secondly, we will look to fine tune your knowledge and application of them to get the best results and to keep your team and business driving along efficiently. Just like you need to do regular maintenance on your car, equipment and even yourself, it's worth doing an occasional audit on your processes to make sure that you're getting the biggest return on investment and that no bad habits are creeping in. There is a difference between activity and productivity and that is what these videos aim to address. SWOT is an acronym which stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities and Threats. It provides a quantified view of where the business is in a customer journey or the environment that you work in. It is designed as a framework to help you identify opportunities to grow your business or to protect the business that you already have. It should identify your strengths and weaknesses so that you can prioritise your activities and investments. It's a great model to get your teams thinking strategically when it is done well. There are two main things that people get wrong with a SWOT analysis. First, they apply all four quadrants internally, so not externally, and only consider their own opinions. For example, strengths such as I have good customer service or opportunities like launch newsletters to reach more customers. Second, they use vague generalizations that are not validated and ultimately have zero meaning or impact. For example, strengths such as good relationships or quality products, weaknesses like admin or IT. If we were to delve a little bit deeper into these statements, we would find that they don't have much value. They are too vague as to provide any useful data, and that vagueness makes devising an action plan really difficult. What do you do with these strengths? How much money would you invest in someone who came to you with an opportunity like this? Often people fill out a SWOT analysis like this for three reasons. They don't know how to use the tool, they don't understand the value or process, or they actually don't know the business as well as they should, so they attempt to hide behind generalizations. Traditionally, people do a SWOT and simply brainstorm elements that they think could fit each category. It results in a vague list that we looked at earlier. So how should it be done correctly? First, let's look at the various components and break down what they are designed to do. Firstly, strengths and weaknesses are internal. They're about you and your business. Opportunities and threats are external. They are things that exist in the environment that you play in. To better understand it, it's worth considering the origin of a SWOT, which is a situational analysis. It's actually derived from military strategy, so when you are trying to remember the order, think of battle tactics. Imagine, you're attempting to capture or own a territory. You would look at the map or out across the battlefield and identify the opportunities that are there to help you move your troops forward. You would also look at any threats on the battlefield that could cause a problem for your troops. So you assess the opportunities and threats present in the external world. Then you would look internally at the various strengths and weaknesses that could help you leverage the external opportunities or mitigate the threats. You would also consider the internal weaknesses so that you can take appropriate steps to offset them. When it comes to business, it's worth mapping out the customer journey. We will cover this in another video. However, it's a way to identify exactly where the priority threats and opportunities are for your business. Ideally, your identified SWOTs should align with a clear customer journey since those are the touch points that directly influence your customers and business. As I've said a few times, be aware of the trap of generalizing. The purpose of this section is to be specific. However, this 
is what we commonly see in SWOTs, account plans and brand plans. The key is to be more specific. It's not just about what it is, it's about looking at the implication, the so what factor. So, we know that opportunities and threats are external and they need to be specific. So let's look at our internal capabilities to be able to respond to those. In other words, our strengths and weaknesses. So the question becomes, how do you know that you have a strength? The most common responses I hear are about relationships, reputation and product. Things like, we have a good relationship with our customers or our product or service is high quality. So there are actually three main factors that make something a strength. Firstly, it's from our customer's perspective. Secondly, it needs to meet their priority needs. And thirdly, we are better or worse than the competition. A strength defines how competitive we are. We should be able to use it to, one, capitalize on an opportunity, two, overcome a threat. A simple question to ask yourself is, if it's a strength, how do we use it? What does it allow us to do? It's important to be honest with ourselves and also challenge the assumptions that we make. Think about it. It doesn't matter what we think, we're not buying the product. So think of one of your identified strengths and put it through this process. For example, we have good relationships. So to start with, do the customers say that they value it? I'm not asking if the customers say that they like you. I'm asking if they've told you that their relationship with you is a key driver in their decision to work with you in the first place. Then do you have the evidence that your relationship is better than the competitors? If they also have a good relationship, or if the customer hasn't told you that yours is better, then it's not a strength. It has to be a relevant capability that you can use. So think of your relationship. If you can't define how you can use it to capitalize on an opportunity or overcome a threat, then it is not a strength. So when you apply that model, you will find that there are three main ways you can categorize the points you come up with. They will either meet all the requirements and be a strength. You may find that they're not as good as the competitor, in which case it is a weakness. But there is also a third option, and it's called a point of parity, which basically means that it is not better or worse than the competitor. So it's something everyone has or does, but it is something that you are expected to have. So once again, from our customer's perspective, you need to have it. If you don't, then it may be a weakness. An example could be a website or an FPOS facility in a cafe. People expect you to have it. If you don't, then it may be considered a weakness since it makes you worse than their competitor. However, if you do have it, it isn't usually considered a strength. It's just something everyone is expecting you to have. Many strengths that people list on a SWOT are usually points of parity. Relationships, quality of service or product, safety profiles, marketing materials, stuff like that. So remember, a SWOT is a great way to identify where you are, where you wanna be, and what capabilities you have to get there. It can help you identify weaknesses that exist so that you can consider investing in resources and training to address them and to bring them up to the same level as your competitors. So the key point to remember with a SWOT, opportunities and threats are external, strengths and weaknesses are internal. You need to be specific, you need to be able to measurably do things with that list. And it's only a strength if it is better than the competitor, it meets a need for the customer, and you have evidence that the customer values it. Models like SWOT help us to ensure that we have a framework to guide us so that we can cover all bases and address key elements in business. But make sure that you are using them properly. Train your end users and train your managers and coaches that will be assessing and supporting it. As always, if you would like some training for you or your team, please reach out to us via our website. Our contact details can be found in the description below. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.